Hello everyone, here is my fringe e-poster entitled Monitoring Grunge Deformation at Geothermal Fields using INSAR, an insight to subsurface fluid dynamics. My name is Jeanne Gignot. I am an INSAR scientist at the CGG Satellite Mapping Group, which offers a series of services derived from satellite data. We use optical and radar images to help with, for example, geological and mineral mapping, as well as surface deformation and offshore slick monitoring. Today, we focus on INSAR applied to geothermal fields. So why do we use INSAR at geothermal fields? Pressure changes in the subsurface can induce surface deformation. For this reason, fluid extraction is likely to cause subsidence and fluid injection usually causes uplift. Any other fluid flows might also produce a surface deformation signature. To illustrate this, I will now briefly go through three examples, one in Kenya, one in Mexico, and one in Iceland. The first case study is at the All Carrier Geothermal Complex in Kenya, where we have identified localized and regional deformation across the period from summer 2018 to summer 2019. As you can see on this velocity map, the dashed circle highlights regional subsidence and uplift likely to be due to large volumes of subsurface fluid flows moving in response to the geothermal activity. The more localized deformation is clearly related to extraction at a power plant, and on the time series, we can see when ground started to respond. Correlating these results with time series of fluid extraction would be useful to analyze in detail fluid dynamics. The second example is at the Cerro Prieto Geothermal Complex in Mexico. Over the year 2019, we noticed a complicated deformation pattern caused by natural tectonic, as it is located at the southern tip of the San Andreas Fault, and also deformation caused by geothermal activity. As you can see on this velocity map, INSA can be useful to discriminate between different causes of deformation. Another interesting thing to notice is the subsidence that occurs at the recharge zone, where uplift should normally be expected. This subsidence correlates with the known lack of natural replenishment. The last case study is at the Svartenki Geothermal Complex in Iceland. It is located on the Reykjanes Peninsula and lies within the Svartenki volcanic system. The overall peninsula straddles the mid-Atlantic plate boundary. It is therefore prone to regular tectonic activity and sometimes volcanic activity occurs as well. In early 2020, a strong uplift was observed over the Svartenki geothermal field. As you can see on the graphs showing vertical displacement from INSA and GPS, short episodes of subsidence were recorded during the overall uplift period. Even though the origin of that uplift is still unclear, it seems to be more likely related to geothermal activity than magmatic activity. Indeed, the opening of cracks increased fluid flows, but no chemical changes were observed in the geothermal system. On the displacement map, you can also see an uplift to the east of Svartsenki. This unrest was, has led to an eruption which is still ongoing at the moment. And to the southwest tip of the peninsula, a subsidence was observed at the Reykjanes power plant. More investigation would be required to understand the origin of that deformation signal. To summarize, INSAR can be a useful tool at geothermal sites to track regional and localized fluid movements, to discriminate between natural and anthropogenic deformation, to better understand fluid loss, delay in reservoir replenishment, etc. And finally, to anticipate any critical deformation stage before damage occurs. Thank you for your attention.